Today we're going to be tying the sneaky pea. Take your copper wire and wrap it down the shank, stopping a quarter of the way down and then pushing together the wire. Then make a few more wraps. You want it so when it's all pushed together, it covers up a quarter of the shank. Once you've done that, you can trim your tag ends. Start your thread base just behind the copper wire. Put a small amount of gel super glue on the wire before advancing your thread over it. Doing this will help keep the wire and the foam head from spinning around. Now cover the wire and super glue with thread. I like to prep my marabou before I tie it in. To do this, I separate the fur from the stem, then stack them up with all the tips matching up. You can skip this step and tie it in as one piece if you'd like. Once you're done your prep work, it's time to tie in your first chunk, allowing it to spread around the shank. Make sure to use tight, controlled wraps when you're tying in the marabou tail, otherwise the whole tail can spin around the shank. Trim the tag ends as close to the shank as possible, and then make a couple thread wraps over them. If you want a bushier tail, don't be afraid to add in more marabou, following the same steps as before. It doesn't hurt to hold the foam head up against the fly to make sure everything's going to line up every once in a while. Tie in your black saddle hackle and then advance your thread up to where you want to stop palmering it in. Trim your tag end. And then attach some hackle pliers to the tip. Now you can start making connecting wraps up the shank until you reach your bobbin. With each wrap I like to hold the hackle back Now you can tie in your hackle once you've reached your bobbin. Trim off your tag end. Then I like to build up a little ramp in front of the hackle. Then advance your thread back behind the eye of the hook. A while ago I picked up this knife at the craft store and it's made fly tying that much easier, specifically separating pairs of rubber legs. That way you can center tie them in as one and separate them later. Now that we got our rubber legs prepped, 
we can start center tying them in behind the eye of the hook off to the side of the shank. To do this, just double over your rubber legs around your thread, then slide them up to the side of the shank, and then make a couple thread wraps over them. Now we're going to repeat this process on the opposite side by doubling over two rubber legs still attached and sliding them over the top of the shank and up against the side. Now that we have rubber legs running down both sides, we're going to make thread wraps advancing towards the back of the fly, capturing them in as we go. Now bring your bobbin up behind the eye of the hook. Throw in a quick whip finish. Then cut your bobbin free. Now take a permanent marker and draw your dots or any other design you would like on the foam head. If you don't want the marker to have a bleeding effect, allow it to dry completely before applying any UV resin. Cover all of the exposed thread with the gel superglue before moving on to the next step. Use a lighter to heat up the tip of your bodkin. Hold it there for a few seconds. Then run the bodkin through the center of the foam head. Then immediately push the foam head onto the shank of the fly, twisting as you go. Then heat up the tip of your bodkin again and run it down through the side of the fly. Then, depending on what you have on hand, Push through either a leg puller or your bobbin threader. In this instance, we're going to use a bobbin threader. They can sometimes be a little trickier to get through the foam, but it's something most tires have at their desk. Once it's all the way through, take two rubber legs still attached to each other and run them through it. Now pull the leg puller or bobbin threader out of the head while holding on to one side of the rubber legs. Now you'll have legs hanging out of both sides of the foam head that you can separate now or at the end of the tie. Make sure they're nice and even before moving on to the next step. Now stick on your eyes evenly on each side of the foam head. I like to apply some thick UV where the rubber legs stick out to help hold them in place. Then cure it with your UV light. Now it's time to coat the entire head. There's a bunch of different UV resins out there you can use. I typically use a thin or flow UV resin. They also make some out there specifically for foam heads. Whatever your poison is, make sure you get good coverage over the entire head.
once you've put your first coat down, make sure to cure the head thoroughly with your UV light, running it back and forth over all sides of the head. Once you've cured the head, you can double check and see if you need to apply a second coat. If so, apply over the entire head or just where it's needed, and then cure it up one last time. Now the only thing you have left is separating all the paired up rubber legs. Once that's done, you're ready to hit the water.